This week on TGC News, weird AR-10s, trinkets for SIGs, a modular rail system, and updates on past stories. Birchwood KC's selection of shooting products is astounding. Whether you're looking for the best targets to zero your gun, or maybe you want to refurbish a forgotten classic, or maybe you just want to slam some steel and have a good time at the range. And don't forget that ear and eye protection. No matter what kind of shooter you are, Birchwood KC has what you need. And because you watch TGC, they're going to help you out with a discount of 10% off your entire order when you use the code TGC10 over at birchwoodkc.com. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our second channel called TGC Surplus. That's the home of our podcast, and it's awesome that you guys listen and watch when we record live. Now, how about some news? Sounds delicious, right? Mm, yes, mm, some news. Oh, no. As per usual, there is a ton of stuff to cover, so let's get to it. First up, Double Star, a company most known for... Well, the ugliest AR receivers known to man has released the worst-looking AR-10 pistol known to man. It's called the STAR-10P, and it's chambered in, you guessed it, 308 Winchester. I'll run through the accoutrements real quick. Out back, there is a strong-arm pistol brace. Then you have their weird-looking receivers, their G10 pistol grip, which I actually like, a CMC drop-in 3.5-pound trigger, then Double Star's cloak M-Lock handguards surrounding the 12-inch stainless heavy barrel capped off with a rasp flash hider. I think that downward slant on the magwell really just hits my eyes weird. The whole thing looks like, I don't know, like a knight's helmet with a rhino horn sticking out of front and a ponytail out back. It's really weird. But besides my own discomfort with the styling, the Double Star rifles are actually well built, and this one carries a price tag to match. The MSRP on this is $2,299.99. Grey Ghost Precision has expanded on their lineup of pistol slides. They already had offerings for the Glock 17, 19, and 43, and now they have an offering for the SIG P320. Side note, it's pretty neat to see the 320 becoming so popular in a somewhat short period of time. So the features on this are fairly straightforward. Up front, those big old holes in the top and sides of the slide to reduce weight. Angled serrations on the sides, front and rear, similar to the factory serrations. The optic cut is actually pretty slick because it's actually compatible with three different optics without using adapter plates. It's set up for the RMR, the Delta Point Pro, and the SIG Romeo 1. It's kind of a solid setup all around. Pricing on these starts at just under 420 bucks, which is only slightly more than the Pro Cut slides from SIG that we recently covered that are coming in at 399. And the SIG slides actually come with night sights. So the real winner here is the optic cut, if you ask me. That's where the value point is on these Grego slides. And speaking of SIG upgrades, there is a company called Icarus Precision out of the Pacific Northwest and they are making a new grip module for the P365. That doesn't sound super exciting, except for the fact that they are made out of aluminum. There are, of course, some differences from the factory grip module. The aluminum version has a much different, which kind of, for the most part, is non-existent texture, a slightly elongated indent for your fingers on the sides, as well as a small indent around the mag release button. It also has a palm swell, which I think is neat, and extended beaver tail, and up front it's got Picatinny rail for attachments instead of that stupid proprietary rail like the original. They also have a 2.0 version without the palm swell, and it also has a little bit more texturing. The price for a slightly heavier, potentially better equipped P365 grip module $299, which would turn your $500 gun into an $800 gun. Whew, that's starting to get a little pricey for an EDC gun. Strike Industries has released a new modular rail system called Gridlock. The overall concept here is actually pretty neat. There are sort of three sections to these. The rear, which attaches to the barrel nut via a locking lever. The middle portion, which gets attached to the rear, and then it's kind of covered in 
M-Lock slots, and then the front section, which comes in two pieces, the top and bottom. And the top has a fold-away iron sight as well as some pick rail. The bottom, which has some M-Lock as well as a couple horizontal slots. I don't really know what that is. I'll call it M-slot lock. I don't know. The rail overall looks fantastic. I think it looks futuristic and cool. I guess the overall idea is that you could swap out that middle section for a different length piece if you wanted, or you could swap out the color pieces for something else, I guess. I'm not really sure why you would want to do that, but it's still a neat concept. The pricing for the all-black 8-inch version is $199.95 and goes up to $284.95 for the 17-inch version with colors. And now it's time for some updates on things we already covered. First up, you may remember that Prime Ammunition was tied up in some litigation with the Swiss ammo giant Ruag Ammotech. There were some strong accusations in both directions to include product being withheld and not fulfilled and bills not being paid. Well, it seems that might be over. According to a press release from Prime, the litigation has concluded. Jim O'Shaughnessy, the CEO of Prime, is quoted as saying, Ruag contacted us and asked us to conclude litigation. We reached a mutually agreeable settlement and are taking their offer to restore the business relationship under careful consideration. When I first read that last sentence, I interpreted it as saying that they were going to continue doing business, just sort of taking it easy. However, I spoke to Jim O'Shaughnessy himself, and he said that my interpretation wasn't exactly correct, and they were still considering things. Another thing I discovered whilst browsing their website, researching this story, is that everything except the 6.5 Creedmoor is listed as out of stock. So right now, that's all you're able to order. And it also says now that the ammo is being made here in the USA. Jim also shared with me that it's actually being loaded by Spark Munitions with Peterson Brass, two companies from the western side of my home state of Pennsylvania. It appears as though Prime may be sort of back up and running, and if this 700-yard group that he sent over out of a 24-inch rifle is any indication, they could be on a good path. Time will tell. Now, our next update. It's very important to me to give brands a fair shake here on the show. If I say something that they feel is wrong or flat out misleading or not fair, I'm going to do my best to share their side of things with you guys. That happened recently with Atlas Arms. You guys may recall me being pretty harsh on their crowdfunding campaign for AP pistol ammo. After it went live, they tweeted that I got things wrong and was spreading misinformation. And I, of course, asked them to tell me what I got wrong so that I can make an effort to get it right. That's the only correct thing to do here. Well, they responded with a wall of text on their website. Unfortunately, we don't have time to read through everything, so I'm going to make sure there's a link in the description for you guys to read, maybe kind of read along everywhere except YouTube, because YouTube is dumb about linking to stuff like that. However, I will try to hit a few highlights as I interpret them. I said that their ammo was going to be 3D printed. I guess I assume that based on what folks commonly have available to them. That was actually incorrect, and if you're going to make it at home, you will need a hobby mill or lathe, which is way more uncommon. They also made a point about my comments on the $30,000 mark that they're trying to hit. They essentially said that $30,000 is a small amount of money for a project like this, and that they've invested significant time and $12,000 of their own money. I sure as hell hope you invested your own time and money into your business. Your business owner, that's what you're supposed to do. It's not a badge of honor. And $30,000, as I took it, was not enough money for the project that you're trying to accomplish. So I thought you were going to fall short. The next thing that I suppose I misunderstood was that this project is less about the actual end product, the actual ammo, and more about the information, knowledge, and research gained from the project. It's all about the information. However, all of the promo that's on their website and in the video leads with the ammo, not the freeware that they plan to release afterwards. The focus in the promotion seems to be the ammo, not the open source data. And that's the reason I explained it the way I did. There's also a point about me saying that they may never deliver, and I still believe that. They basically go on to say that, yeah, we're going to deliver even if we have to fund it ourselves, but with donations, we can do it faster and better. Yeah, obviously. 
but you're an unknown and I have to warn people that you may not come through and that spending their money in a crowdfunding campaign is a risk. Again, you guys can go over to their website and read their response for yourselves. In fact, I encourage it. They feel that I slighted them. In some ways I did, but at the end of the day, it's not really up to me about how this all shakes out. It's up to you guys at home. Let me know in the comments section about what you think. If I was wrong, tell me. You know, guys, I've been thinking about getting a hybrid lately. No, not the kind of hybrid you're thinking. The handmade in the USA kind of hybrid with leather and Kydex. The kind that is available for just about every popular handgun on the planet. The kind that's comfortable when you put it on and comfortable all day, even if you're a big guy. I might need a belt to go with it too. Crossbreed holsters will definitely check those boxes. And if you use the code TGC15 over at crossbreedholsters.com, you'll get a whopping 15% off your entire order. And now a segment that you guys really seem to be enjoying, Patton's Armory. This is a segment where I grab one of my personal guns and tell you guys about it. This is the only AK that I currently own. This is a Rifle Dynamics RD702. This one kind of has a slightly unique story. Right now it's sporting a Holosun optic. It's got this really nice Cerakote with the red and the black and the silver. I think it's cool. I, I love this, this rifle. It's also got an X-Tech mag in there. Um, it's kind of just a, a really, really nice AK, and uh, I, I thoroughly enjoy this. Now, the way I acquired this one is, I don't know, different than how most people acquire their guns. So I actually got this in trade. Basically, in exchange for promoting something that that particular person wanted me to promote, he traded me this beautiful rifle and even did the Cerakote. I mean, this thing is beautiful. It's got an ALG trigger. It's got a whole bunch of nice parts. All in all, there's a reason that this is the only AK that I own. Maybe someday we'll do a video on that one. If you guys enjoyed this little look at my guns and you want to see more, let me know in the comments. And now it's time for Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer your questions from all over the internet. This week, our questions are coming from the TGC Nation Facebook group. Greg Lewis says, what training do you think the average shooter needs in regards to medical training? I think that trauma classes specific to gun-related injuries are really important. However, they are very expensive oftentimes, and that is usually a prohibiting factor. Alex Black says, what would you recommend for a good all-around carry revolver? You could look at a Ruger SP-101, Ruger LCR, Smith & Wesson 642 or 640. I mean, maybe a 686 if you want to go a little bit bigger. It's up to you, but all those are really solid. You can't go wrong with any of those if you choose to carry a wheel gun. My friendly fire question to you guys. With the moon landing 50-year anniversary over the weekend, I started thinking, what is the best innovation to come to firearms since we landed on the moon, a.k.a. in the last 50 years? Sound off in the comments below with your answer. And unfortunately, that is it for this week's show. Guys, you know what to do. If you dislike the video, hit that button. If you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, and consider supporting us via the links in the video description. Be sure to check out our deal of the week over on theguncollective.com. We have an Amazon affiliate store as well as a second YouTube channel called TGC Surplus. Go over there and get subscribed. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Yep, it's over, but don't worry, you can click on the video up top to watch last week's show, and the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.